Well, um, if you are only going to doing suborbital, then your rocket can be sort of shorter, yes. We're probably familiar with Elon Musk's joke about Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin. And this time, his objective is their New Shepard rocket. Imagine that your spaceflight lasts just 11 minutes and your rocket never reaches orbit. So how can you redefine the future of humanity? Today's Tech Map episode isn't just about shade. It's about facts, flight paths, and the future of space. We're breaking down what really separates a space experience from a space mission. And by the end, you'll understand exactly why Musk sees New Shepard as little more than a cosmic carnival ride. At the 2021 Code Conference, during an on-stage interview with Kara Swisher, Swisher asked Musk directly what he thought about the rocket's phallic appearance. Musk, with his usual humor, replied, I mean, it could be a different shape, potentially. The audience laughed, but Swisher pushed further, asking if there was a technical reason for the rocket's form. Musk, never one to pass up a punchline, added, if you're only going suborbital, your rocket can be shorter. That comment, implying Blue Origin's limited reach compared to SpaceX's orbital missions, drew even more laughs from the crowd. When you're launching only suborbital flights, like Blue Origin's New Shepard, your rocket doesn't need to reach orbit, which requires much more speed and altitude. So technically, a suborbital rocket doesn't need to be as tall or powerful as an orbital one like SpaceX's Falcon 9 or Starship. That's the logic behind saying it can be shorter. But here's the playful side. Musk was also making a not-so-subtle joke about the rocket's phallic shape, implying that Blue Origin made it look that way. And it's shorter because it's only going suborbital. It's a bit of classic Musk sarcasm wrapped in engineering talk. While clearly a lighthearted moment, the comment also reflected the ongoing rivalry between the two billionaires, one leading a company that managed to send astronauts to the ISS, and the other still stuck to suborbital tourism by then. Four years later, Blue Origin eventually launched New Glenn into orbit for the first time, yet this achievement paled in comparison to the swift advancements of its competitors. The shape joke may be funny, but underneath it lies a deeper competition over who's really leading the new space race. This is made clearer when we put two representative vehicles, Blue Origin's New Shepard and SpaceX Crew Dragon, on the scale for comparison. Firstly, on flight duration and altitude. New Shepard's entire journey lasts around 11 minutes, with only roughly four minutes in zero G. It offers a brief taste of space and weightlessness on a suborbital hop. New Shepard launches vertically, accelerates for about two minutes, and then the capsule coasts upward on a ballistic arc just above the Karman line, the edge of space, approximately 100 kilometers up. After reaching its peak altitude, gravity quickly pulls the capsule back to Earth. This suborbital trajectory means passengers experience only a few minutes of weightlessness before re-entry and landing. The entire trip, from launch to touchdown, takes about 10 to 12 minutes. Dragon, by contrast, stays in orbit for days or weeks. Achieving orbit requires much higher speeds, about 28,000 kilometers per hour, or 17,500 miles per hour allowing the spacecraft to continuously circle the planet rather than falling back immediately. This enables Dragon to remain in space for days or weeks, supporting longer missions for crew and cargo. The difference in the flight duration and altitude stems from each ship's mission objectives. New Shepard is all about thrill tourism. Imagine strapping in, counting down, and then suddenly roaring skyward. In just a couple of minutes, you're weightless, floating in a roomy capsule with five other civilians, gazing out of panoramic windows at the curve of Earth. The whole ride is over in about 11 minutes, but those four minutes of zero-g are unforgettable. New Shepard's design reflects this. Safety, comfort, and the biggest windows in space. There's no pilot, no complex controls. Just an automated journey that lets ordinary people, with deep pockets, 
savor the edge of space. Dragon is a spacecraft with a job. Ferrying astronauts, cargo, and science experiments to the International Space Station. Its missions last days or even weeks, requiring robust life support, docking systems, and the ability to withstand the rigors of orbital flight and re-entry. Dragon's interior is more utilitarian. Think control panels, touchscreens, and seats designed for launch, re-entry, and everything in between. Every aspect, from the heat shield to the navigation, is engineered for reliability and endurance because lives and critical science depend on it. So, how do these goals shape rocket design? New Shepard is a space roller coaster, short, spectacular, and focused on the passenger experience. Its capsule is spacious, its windows are huge, and its systems are automated for maximum safety and minimum fuss. Dragon is a space shuttle, tough, versatile, and mission-driven. It's packed with technology for docking, life support, and long-duration spaceflight. Its design prioritizes function and survivability over comfort. Of course, a space trip is essentially about enjoying and experiencing something new. Passengers on New Shepard thus need only a couple of days of basic training with the basic lessons. In just two days, around 14 hours total, you'll go from earthbound to space ready. It's a blend of classroom lessons, live demonstrations, and hands-on time in a mock capsule. No fluff, just the essentials. You'll get the full rundown of your journey. What happens during launch, when weightlessness kicks in, and how the capsule gently returns to Earth. Every moment is mapped out, so there are zero surprises. Not only do the theoretical lessons, but crew members also get acclimated to the actual capsule, including their assigned seats, harnesses, and the location of safety equipment like oxygen masks and emergency buttons. You'll practice hopping in and out of the capsule, strapping in fast, like under 15 seconds fast, and dealing with emergency situations like fire or a quick exit. You'll even rehearse using breathing masks, all so you're cool under pressure. Floating in zero G is the fun part. You'll get a taste of what it's like to float in space and learn how to move around safely. There's a method to the madness, especially when it's time to buckle back in for re-entry. There will be a little bit challenge coming from the physical check. You'll need to climb a seven-story launch tower in under 90 seconds and walk over bumpy ground, all while being able to handle forces of up to 5.5 Gs. Space is no joke. In the final rehearsal, you'll go through five simulated scenarios and wrap up with a final test. It's all about making sure you're 100% ready, whether everything goes perfectly or not. How about your luggage? Are you restricted on luggage weight? Well, you can bring up to three pounds of personal items. Think photos, a special keepsake, or anything meaningful you want to take on your space adventure. Oh, and don't bring sharp objects or dangerous weapons. In the NS-31 mission, journalist Gail King chose photographs to bring, along with a memento from her grandson, while Perry said she plans to bring something with life in it to remind us how precious the Earth is. Former NASA rocket scientist Aisha Bow planned to bring the flag from Apollo 12 and dehydrated conch chowder, the national dish of her native Bahamas. For bioastronautics research scientist and civil rights activist Amanda Nguyen, her trip to space included shells from the island in Malaysia, where her Vietnamese mother first sought asylum following the fall of Saigon along with a handwritten note that says, never ever give up. Journalist and helicopter pilot Lauren Sanchez planned to bring the stuffed animal mascot of her children's book, The Fly Who Flew to Space, as well as a few personal items. And the interesting thing about flying on New Shepard is that it flies itself. You're not the pilot, you're the passenger. So the focus is all on your experience and safety. In the end, the whole process is built to make anyone feel like an astronaut, even if it's your first time leaving the planet. This is so much easier than taking part in the orbital missions. Crew Dragon isn't a joyride. It's a high-tech space machine, packed with life support, navigation, propulsion, docking, and emergency systems. 
Astronauts spend months learning how to monitor and operate every part of it, including jumping in with manual controls if something goes wrong. Emergency readiness is compulsory. From cabin depressurization to fires or even mid-launch aborts, the team has to be ready for anything. Simulations get intense and repetitive to make sure every move becomes second nature. Since Crew Dragon docks with the International Space Station, astronauts must be fluent in docking protocols and ISS systems. They also train on how to transfer cargo, run science experiments, and work seamlessly with an international crew already on board. Life for months in microgravity is more challenging than you might think. Astronauts train on how to move, eat, sleep, and work in that place. It's a whole new way of living, and they have to be good at it, especially on missions that last weeks or even months. Space is hard on the body and the mind. Astronauts go through intense physical training, medical checks, and mental prep to make sure they're in peak condition. Launch, long-duration flight, and re-entry all put serious stress on the body. To better understand, you can watch the image of Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams as they were back to Earth after nine months stuck in space due to the Boeing Starliner's trouble. Notably, not every mission is the same. Some involve spacewalks, some science experiments. Others may require working on external hardware. So training is tailored to fit exactly what each mission demands. In conclusion, Crew Dragon training is no joke. It's long, hands-on, and mentally demanding. Every astronaut has to be ready to fly, fix, and survive, no matter what space throws at them. That's why the public found it strange when some NS-31 passengers realized they were astronauts just because they were in weightlessness for four minutes. More ridiculously, the only thing they can do in those four minutes is scream, showing their excitement. With all of that said, you probably have your own answer for the question of who is really pushing space exploration to a new frontier? Dragon or New Shepard? Okay, let's drop your answer in the comment section below. Can't wait to listen to your opinion. Blue Origin NS-31 was a suborbital space flight operated by Blue Origin. Taking place on April 14, 2025, the trip lasted for 10 minutes and 21 seconds. The six-person mission was the 11th launch of the Blue Origin New Shepard Space Tourism Program, which uses remotely piloted launch rockets to take a capsule with passengers into suborbital space. The passengers consisted of NASA aerospace engineer Aisha Bow, pop singer Katy Perry, film producer Carrie Ann Flynn, civil rights activist Amanda Nguyen, journalist Gail King, and pilot and journalist Lauren Sanchez the last of whom is the fiancé of Amazon and Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos. Their participation was announced on February 27, 2025. 